Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching Channel Hot Monkey, and today we're going to talk about the internet and death. If you're one of the 3 billion people who use the internet, you probably google yourself at least once, right? If you google yourself right now, chances are that your top results will be links to your profiles on social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, etc. where you post everything from random stuff to important events from your everyday life. But life of course won't last forever. Each and every one of us will eventually die, just like everything else in our universe. At one certain point that a lot of us won't even recognize, we will send our last email, share our last Facebook status, or post our last picture on Instagram. But what happens to our online stuff after we're gone? A few years back, then 24-year-old student at the University of Saturn, California, Rowan Aurora, was on Facebook reading posts by his friends from back home in New Delhi. While going through his daily Facebook routines, he came across a photo of one of his high school friends in a hospital bed. He was obviously hospitalized, but he didn't seem to look that bad, so Aurora thought a casual friendly quip might cheer him up. Since his friend had a habit of keeping his hair long, Aurora simply wrote, did you get a haircut? Shortly after, he got a message informing him that his 23-year-old high school friend had recently been in a car crash and died of cardiac arrest and liver failure in the same hospital bed from the Facebook photo. There are more than 7 billion people alive on Earth today. Estimates of the total number of humans who have ever lived range in the order of 100 billion. When searching for this number, we can never be 100% accurate as there are many estimates that, at their best, can simply give a rough order of magnitude. For example, the Population Reference Bureau estimates that the number of people who have ever lived is somewhere around 107 billion. Now, this estimate was updated back in 2011, so the number of human beings who have ever lived did grow. By taking into consideration all the humans that have been born afterwards, we'll circle the number at 108 billion. Remember, these are all just estimates. But if we take that number and subtract the estimated number of people who are alive in the year 2016, with simple math, we can estimate that the number of humans who have ever died is just over 100 billion. But how many dead people are on the internet? Well, this is a number that is also hard to estimate because of variables like anonymity, multiple profiles and accounts created by a single person, or simply the lack of information on whether a particular user is dead or alive. It's really hard to find any concrete studies that deal with this number on a wider scale, but if we narrow it down to, let's say, a social network level, then it gets much easier to make estimates. For example, it's estimated that over 30 million Facebook users died within the first eight years of the site's existence. Randall Monroe of XKCD has calculated that if Facebook keeps a steady growth, the number of dead users will outnumber the living sometime around the year 2130. Unless, of course, its popularity drops, in which case this would happen even earlier, sometime around the year 2065. But besides the number of dead people on sites like Facebook, another interesting thing is what these sites do with their accounts and profiles after their owners die. Now, because the number of accounts and profiles of the dead is still believed to be much smaller than those of active users who are alive, a lot of websites don't even have any specific policies for deceased users. Bigger social networking sites, on the other hand, do. One example is the already mentioned Facebook that turns the deceased user's profile into a memorial. In order for this to happen, a special contact form must be filled out and accompanied by a proof of death such as an obituary or news article. This form can be submitted by both family and non-family members. Once a profile is memorialized, the deceased user no longer shows up in the suggestion box. The privacy setting is altered so that only their confirmed friends can view the profile and search for it. Their contact information and status updates also get removed and no one is able to log into their account in the future. It's also possible to delete the account as well as all the data that was on it, but Facebook holds the legal right to keep the user's credentials for up to 90 days after the request for deletion was submitted. Twitter will also close a deceased person's profile. 
In order for this to happen, family members must submit a formal request to Twitter's Trust and Safety Department and provide a copy of the death certificate. After closing the account, Twitter can also provide archives of public tweets for deceased users. Another site that has the option of memorializing user profiles is Wikipedia. However, this is only done for users who have made a substantial contribution to Wikipedia or who have at least made several hundred edits on the site. Ordinarily, after the user has passed away, a user page is fully edit protected in order to prevent vandalism. Some companies actually allow their users to have a say in what happens to their account after they die. For example, Google. By providing them with the inactive account manager, Google allows service users to set up a process themselves in which they can delegate a person who will take ownership and control of their account after they die. In case you're wondering, yes, this applies to YouTube as well. They will also work with close family members and representatives to close online accounts once a user is known to be deceased and in some cases, they will also provide content from a deceased user's account. Now, as the number of the deceased on the internet rises, more companies will eventually have to come up with specific policies that deal with the matter. As it is determined by nature, the number of dead users will grow and all their online stuff will just linger on. And that's gonna be a lot of stuff. But it's just the way that nature works and not even technology can run from that. Besides, it's not like the internet could ever run out of room, right? Well, not likely. The internet isn't just one space that has a fixed size. It's a system consisting of billions of interconnected computer networks that are constantly maintained, updated and improved. Technically, we could run out of IP addresses. It actually already happened with the exhaustion of IPv4. IPv4, short for Internet Protocol Version 4, is used to identify devices on a network through an addressing system. It uses 32-bit addresses, which limits the number of potential IP addresses to 4,294,967,250 when IPv4 was first deployed back in 1983, this meant that we had more than enough. But with the growth of internet usage and consequentially the number of systems and devices connected to it, we knew that we would eventually see the day when we would run out. And we were right. Fortunately, we developed IPv6, which uses 128-bit addresses, meaning that it can provide us with 340 undecillion IP addresses. So when it comes to space in terms of IP addresses, I'd say we're pretty much good. But can we run out of time? Now, I don't mean like the end of time for mankind or the universe, but computers. Well, in some way, the answer is yes. We even know the exact date, hour, minute and second it's going to happen. A lot of the computers that we use count time using the Unix time system, which describes instants in time defined as the number of seconds that have elapsed since January the 1st, 1970 UTC, not including leap seconds. Since the system counts in a 32-bit number, it covers a range of about 136 years in total. Eventually, the timer is going to reach its end. It's going to happen at exactly 3 a.m. 14 minutes and 7 seconds on the 19th of January 2038. Beyond that, time will wrap around and be stored internally as a negative number, which these systems will see as having occurred on the 13th of December 1901 rather than the 19th of January 2038. This is something known as the year 2038 problem or simply the end of Unix time. But just like the IPv4 problem, We'll fix this one as well. Time will keep going, people will continue using computers and networks, and people will continue to die. And eventually, the dead will outnumber the living on the internet, just like in life, before the internet ever existed. At moments, it may seem like a depressing topic, but think of it this way. Most of us will live regular lives and will be forgotten after we die by everyone except our closest family and friends. We won't be getting any credit for changing the world, no streets will ever be named after us, no one will ever write a book about our lives, and no person is ever going to read about us and say, hey, there's one of the most awesome people who ever lived. But for a brief moment in time after we're gone, somewhere in some place called the internet, 
people just might stumble upon something we left and they'll still be able to see what we looked like, where we traveled, what kind of books we read, what music and movies we liked, some weird videos we made, as well as a few drunk pics and selfies with toilets in the background. But knowing this, we can use death as a tool, as motivation to use this great thing called the internet and maybe even leave something more behind. We'll end the video with the words of the late Steve Jobs. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked, there's no reason not to follow your heart. Death is the destination we all share, no one has ever escaped it, and that is as it should be, because death is, very likely, the single best invention of life. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and as always, stay strong.